So I just want to like journal prompt, I guess. Talk a little bit about this on my Instagram, maybe a couple of stories. Mainly because I was super nervous. Um, because those kind of things make me super uncomfortable. But it was a couple of days, like a week before the Sagittarius eclipse. And my light just went dull. Um, I had walked outside, I couldn't sleep, the energy is completely off. I went outside to let my dog out, and in the parking lot, there was a full moon. There was, well, there wasn't a full moon, but there, it, the way it looked was like there was an eclipse. Um, it was orange, which I wasn't worried about, um, but it was the wrong face, and it was in a completely different area than it normally is. Right? It shouldn't have been there anyways, the way that it, the way that it goes, it shouldn't have been here, okay? It's usually my backyard was in my front yard. I didn't think anything at that moment. Um, I felt very calm. I felt at peace. I had no pain in my body. I had no thoughts. I just felt completely whole. And I wanted to stay there, you know? wanted this to stay there. Unfortunately, it didn't look for it. It almost did too. It wouldn't look for it as well. Um, I came inside. I took a shower. And for those of you who don't know, the shower is like where I get a lot of my messages. So like I get a shit ton of downloads in the shower. I was like, you know what? I'm going to look in the back. I'm going to look in my backyard and I'm going to see if the real moon is there, right? It was there. It was white. It was the right face of what it should have been. Um, and then I kind of let ego take over. I was like, oh my god, what is going on? What does this all mean? I felt so calm. It didn't take Jerry too long. I don't know. I don't know what to think. You know? So I went to bed. I told myself that I am safe, that I'm protected. Uh, oh, rewind. Okay. So the Saturday before this had happened. Um, no, no, no. This was after I lied. No, 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 no. Okay. I didn't, you know, I just went on my day. And then the weekend came. It was the Saturday after I had seen the eclipse. It was on a Tuesday. So on the Wednesday, it was exactly a week from the the eclipse. So on Wednesday, I woke up, I got hit by a goddamn Mack truck. My whole body was like, boom. Alright? And I know it was because of the love energy, and I know that when I went to bed, I had asked her a message um, to, to have me integrate that message, whatever was meant to happen, or whatever I did to get, to get, right? Well, sometimes when we're not ready to know yet, and we start to process things, we don't always get it right away. I mean, we'll get it in dream world or spirit world, whatever realm we're in, right? And then it takes us time to kind of remember. Um, so Saturday, I was just sitting there and spirit told me, you need to protect your house. And I was like, okay, I'll protect my house. So I had made black salt like a month ago and I went ahead and I used it, put it all around my house, put it in my yard, like a barrier. I've done this before. It's nothing new. Um, I have my mirrors locked, but I heard to lock my windows. And that was new for me. So I trusted that and I locked them. Let me just say this. I did not come from a place of fear while doing this. I did not come from any place, but just trusting and listening to what Spirit had told me to do. And so that's what I did come time for the full moon right it was the monday before and my spirit guide had let me know that when this portal comes that i had to set a timer for 10 minutes 11 minutes and 12 minutes because the eclipse lasts for 13 minutes this one in particular did so i was like, okay, fine. Like, that's cool, whatever. I'm down to go in a portal. Like, lead the way, right? 
So I have a dragon. Everyone has a dragon. I was like, I'm going to take my dragon in there with me because if you know about dragons, they look it up. Okay, I'm not going to focus too much on the dragon. So I had went out on Tuesday night and I set my alarms. I was ready for it. I was ready to go through this portal. I was ready to do whatever I had to do. Did I know? No, but I was trusting because uh, that's just kind of what I do. Like, I'm just like, okay, if I get a good feeling or they tell me like, hey, this would be a good idea for you, then I'm like, okay, if it feels good. So I was sitting outside, I was watching it. There was clouds everywhere. There was absolutely no way that you could see the moon. Like it was literally covered. And you know, for shits and giggles, I was like, oh, I'm gonna use like, <laughs> my my magic and like move the clouds right well it worked to an extent um it rigged it okay so on both sides of the moon there was clouds that were shaped like monks then there was ribs and you could every pivot through you could see the full moon and it was like, that's the heart. The moon is acting as the heart right now. What This is so beautiful. And I just felt that like complete sense of calmness happening again, you know. As I was looking at it, the easiest way that I can explain this is there was what shadows, right? You know, like the Dementors from Harry Potter, except you couldn't you can't see their face you know what i mean i tried recording i couldn't record this one um they kept flying around the moon and it was like what the fuck is going on you know like what what is happening like i don't understand my guides had made me to believe that this moon was that very special moon a very good moon for me to truly connect deeper into my divine and work on healing like and basically the way that I had felt was like if I entered this portal, it would be like taking ayahuasca without taking ayahuasca or having any of the side effects, like if that makes sense. Um, I was all for it, of course. And then I'm trying to record these things so that I can like show people what it was and I couldn't, you can't see them on camera. So I said, forget it. I went to go out at four, the moon is still covered, cannot see it. So there's a dragon that was underneath the moon. I got that on recording though. I got that, the dragon under there, which I just found so beautiful because I was going to <clears throat> take my dragon anyways, you know, as protection. And I just kept hearing like we have to really embrace our divine we really have to trust we have to come from a place of love and there over this time i realized like how much we've really been ran over by such masculine energy and i'm not talking sex here i'm talking we all have a masculine energy and a feminine energy within us and it's time to be more in our feminine energy, more nurturing, more loving, more caring, more uplifting others instead of putting them down, trusting our intuitions, loving ourselves unconditionally to raise our vibration because we've been doing it all wrong. A lot of people who have our ability, right? Everyone has this ability. Everybody has this gift to talk to their guides, the angels, loved ones, whatever the case may be, we all have the option to connect to the divine we all have the option to connect to god to source to the universe whatever you choose to call it those who have tapped in and fully embraced it we feel as though at least me and a couple of the people that i know that we have been put here to serve others to help others and to help them heal their traumas so that we can raise the collection the collective the collective vibration of this world that's not what it is we have to heal our traumas everybody has to heal their traumas 
Everybody has to look at themselves. We have to be the dark. We are dark. We have to find the light within ourselves in the darkness so that when it is dark, our light shines brighter. That was another message that I had gotten. It's just absolutely crazy to me how everything that I've been trying to process, I still haven't quite figured it all out besides just coming from a place of love, besides coming from good intentions and um, not being judgmental or hard on ourselves, right? It took me a while to process it all. I'm still, I'm still processing. I'm still processing it. So I don't know. So if anybody has any idea about the man, um, I don't like sharing. I don't like doing these videos. I don't like doing any of this. It makes me very, very uncomfortable. <laughs> but spirit has been yelling at me like, you need to share this. Everybody needs to hear this. You need to come out and say something. Um, I'm hoping that whoever watches this can help me too to, I don't know, not be harsh and judgmental and tell me how you're feeling, I guess, or if you've seen two moons and not the prophecy, because I don't think this has anything to do with the rapture, if I'm being completely honest with you. Um, side note, last year I went on this huge kick with Adam and Eve, and when I had talked to my healer, I had asked her you know, has she ever seen anything like this? Has she went through with something? Am I going fucking batshit crazy? You know? Um, because it wasn't in meditation. It was real life. I was awake. I was outside. And there was two moons. And when I was telling her the same story that I'm telling you, she said it reminded her of Adam and Eve. And it just blew my mind because she didn't know about Adam and Eve and my kick on Eve that I went on last year. There's a couple of you who know who will watch this and I I went on a huge kick with Adam and Eve, and how come Eve isn't Eve? Why doesn't Eve have the story? But that's a, a different topic, okay? But she had said that, you know, it reminded her of Adam and Eve with the ribs, how Adam was created out of one of Eve's ribs. So don't get biblical on me because I'm not a biblical person, okay? But do I think it's the end of the world? Because when I had looked up, what did it mean to see two moons? I couldn't get answers from my guides. I didn't know what was going on. So I resorted to Google and I had asked what does it, what does it mean to see two moons? And for me, when I read the Bible, I'm like, hello, Pr press one for English because I'm no comprendo, you know? Um, yeah. So I had, I had asked her and I don't think it's the end of the world. I, I don't think it's the end of the world. Do I think it's the end of the of a broken down consciousness, a corrupt way of being, a tower moment, absolutely. To be rebirthed into something beautiful, absolutely. To where people are free, yeah. And I've talked about the divide. Everybody knows about this divide. It's not just a divide politically, because I don't talk about politics. Um, but it's a spiritual divide. Those who want to work on themselves, those who want to deal with their stuff, or at least willing to try. I feel like they'll be on one this side of the world in a different realm. And those who want to stay in fear and hate. And who, who just are not nice people. They'll stay on their own side. And that saddens me. It truly saddens me. It breaks my heart. You know, I would want everybody to be at peace with themselves, to heal themselves and be there. But I know a lot of people carry judgment. Judgment is one of my things that I work on constantly. Um, it's one of my ancestral patterns that I have been working on for years. Um, anyways, I'll get over that. Then, just a couple of days ago, right, the moon was supposed to come up by 8.43, and it was almost 1 o'clock in the morning, and there was no moon. So I find it odd that 9 or 10, you know, it was like 9 days before 
the full moon lunar eclipse, I see two fucking moons. And ten days before the solar eclipse, I see no fucking moon. So, yeah, it's been a weird week. It's been a very weird week. I feel like, um, just a lot of love needs to be handed out. Unconditional love. Loving others for what it is. There's so much darkness in this world. But where darkness lies, light comes in. I think I said this before, where we're like seeds, you know? You can plant yourself down into the dirt and under cement. And as long as that seed sees some light, it will grow. It doesn't matter. It doesn't care what people think. If it's a weed, you know what I mean? It doesn't care. It's like I'm fucking growing. And that's what we're doing here. We are souls living in a human world. Having a human experience in these meat suits of ours. None of this stays. What I look like, what you look like. If I'm skinny or fat. It doesn't matter. As long as I love myself, as long as you love yourself, none of it matters, right? I don't know. Can you tell I'm still processing it? I didn't know how to say this on my live, so I figured I would just make a YouTube just because there's a lot more reach that I guess you could say. Um, so if anybody else has experienced this, you could kind of if you wouldn't mind, kind of maybe like giving me um, feedback or something that you, that comes to your mind um, that isn't rude. Because the whole point of this video is to come from compassion and love and understanding, acceptance, not being ugly, okay? So, I guess do your diary over 